And thank you for joining our first episode of Dive In with the DOV. My name is Erica Fissel, and my co host today is Mia Gilliam. So, our two guests today are Shelly Clevenger and Kelsey Langheim. And because it is April, we are talking about Sexual Assault Awareness Month. So, thank you, Shelly and Kelsey, for joining us today. Thanks for having us. Yeah. So would you guys just like to take a moment to introduce yourself to our viewers, what you're doing, your education, maybe how you got into the work that you're doing now? Uh, Sure. So I'm currently at Illinois State University as an associate professor, but I will be leaving um, to start as department chair for the first victim studies department in the nation at Sam Houston State University starting June 1st. Uh, My PhD is from Indiana University of Pennsylvania, uh, which is outside of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Um, And I got interested in sexual assault whenever I was in graduate school. Um, I was actually doing a sex offender dissertation. Um, You know, and I already had started it, right? You can't stop mid dissertation, but I started to get really interested in victimization and the victim component more so than the offenders. So I figured once I got my big girl job and got to do what I wanted to do, I was going to focus on victims. Yeah, and uh, I am the program director for YWCA Stepping Stones in McLean County um, in Illinois. So there I kind of oversee our whole rape crisis program, um, counseling, advocacy, and education services. Um, My undergrad and grad degrees from Illinois State University in criminal justice sciences. And the reason why I am in this uh, particular role is because of Shelly. She, I took one of her classes in undergrad and then it kind of all took off from there. So Shelly's fault. It was. Uh, Kelsey was the best student to work with, and Kelsey was my first TA. She came up to me my first semester at ISU in 2012 and said, I'd like to be your TA, and I was like, I didn't even know I could have TAs. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. Yeah. That's fair. And that's right. where it all started, uh, I guess, eight uh, years ago. I mean, I know the answer to this, but not all of our viewers slash listeners do, but um, can you talk a little bit about how you both have previously worked together um, on different projects and things, not necessarily research, but um, for Sexual Assault Awareness Month specifically or more broadly? Elsie was my undergraduate teaching assistant, um, so she helped me with some civic engagement projects, but then as my undergraduate and graduate research assistant, she traveled with me um, to different rape crisis centers in Illinois uh, to do interviews and to um, take notes and just she sat in with me when we did interviews and then I let Kelsey do an interview herself so she got to conduct um, an interview with a sexual assault survivor Um, and so she worked with me on my research until she left ISU and graduated with her master's and then whenever she took the role at Stepping Stones that was the rape crisis center that I had worked the most with. So I was thrilled, of course, that, you know, one of my favorite students took that role. And so her and I then partnered on civic engagement projects. They've always promoted my research. But then when Kelsey got into that role, she helped promote my research. And so it's been the best partnership that I've had in my professional career. And it was one of the reasons I thought about not going to Sam Houston because I didn't know if I I would ever, (laughs) I didn't know if I'd ever find a better community partnership than what I've had with Kelsey and with Stepping Stones. Don't cry. Don't cry, Kelsey. I know. (laughs) (laughs) Could could you talk a little bit about some of like the specific like projects or or things that y'all have done together? 
Yeah, we've done um, a couple different paint nights where we have had students come and create art along with survivors. Um, and we've had artists come to help facilitate the students and um, the, the survivors making the art. Um, the biggest success uh, that we had was we partnered to do an event called Survivors at the Normal Theater. Um, and this was <clears throat> local community members who read quote from my research, some of which Kelsey helped me collect. Um, and I had students create um, kind of a, I don't know how else to describe it. It's a body, like a cutout to represent the survivor. And inside it reflected the victimization and on the other side, the healing. And so that made a thousand dollars. And I split that with Stepping Stones um, and then also with the local domestic violence shelter. So that was pretty successful. And then we also, that's I right, look, Mia has the, she has that's the. Awesome. My mom attended. <laughs> she did. It was the best thing. I'm going to do it at Sam Houston also, um, as, you know, if we're back in person classes. Um, and so that was really exciting. And then we partnered with a What Were You Wearing? We worked with Stepping Stones. And once again, use local survivor quotes. And then my students had to recreate the clothing. Um, and we did a presentation at the Women and Gender Studies Symposium. And that was really beneficial. Um, we've also had students come in um, to Stepping Stones to do presentations. They've made children's books. They've made comic books. And the staff of Stepping Stones were there, and they presented to them. Um, so in addition to the research stuff, I, partner, I partnered with Stepping Stones, God, every semester, even before Kelsey was in that role, to do lots of different things in the community. I, uh, I vaguely remember during, I don't remember if it was your victimology class or the sex offenders class during my undergrad, um, where you had, I think, two, two people from Stepping Stones come, come to class and talk. Um, I did, yes. Uh, uh, Hillary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then for us with the same events, um, Shelly's always been like our biggest supporter and pushing our students to come attend the events. So um, that's always been really great for us too. Obviously, it's a little hard to ignore right now is how this coronavirus uh, pandemic might be impacting your work, whether it be data collection or research with Shelly or day-to-day -day operations for you, Kelsey. Could you speak about how you guys are dealing with that right now? Yeah, um, for Stepping Stones now, um, everybody's working from home. So all of our counseling services have to be telehealth. Um, so that's like phone call counseling, advocacy, uh, all of that good stuff that we normally do is all down with remote work. We still are going into the hospitals, which is really great. Um, we haven't seen surprisingly too much of an uptick of cases. Um, we are still getting calls, but it's just surprisingly not as frequent. Um, and I honestly kind of attribute that to people maybe not feeling so comfortable at home. Um, maybe they don't have those private spaces or whatever to do the counseling. Um, but yeah, it's definitely a hard adjustment to be working directly with people all the time to then go to like not seeing anyone. Um, but yeah, otherwise things are pretty good. Um, we're not able to do education presentations. So we're moving a lot of our stuff and along with that, our SAM stuff's all social media based, um, which is really cool. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, Shelly, what about for you? Like how, because obviously all of our classes have now had to be shifted to, to online um, and, you know, discussing things like sexual assault can be difficult enough in the classroom, but um, how do you think that's been impacted by the uh, not uh, gentle but abrupt switch um, to, to that quick transition to online? Um, how's yeah, that been? It's really disappointing because we had a lot of civic engagement projects planned. <laughs> so, Especially um, with it being April. <laughs> yeah. Right. And we had, I mean, a lot of stuff was planned. Um, and actually, you know, a lot of the students had already completed them. So 
you know, I have to take pictures of them, but yeah, they're missing out on what I always think is the best part of my classes, which is the civic engagement and getting to do all the sexual assault awareness month stuff with stepping stones. Um, you know, we had talked before this in my classes about, uh, cause I'm teaching cyber crime. So we talked about the, the cyber sexual stuff already. So not to say that the stuff left was boring, right? Because cybercrime is fascinating. But um, I think, you know, since we had already talked about a lot of that, it's easier to transition online. We had the hard conversations um, in person. And as for my research, I finished all of my Illinois-based research since I'm leaving to go to Texas. So it didn't impact me research-wise. Um, in a way that it would have, I think, a year or two ago. Yeah, definitely. I, I definitely had to, struggle. so I'm teaching victimology this semester, and you stop just part of the way, and you've only gotten through some of the material, and so, I mean, thankfully, mm -hmm. we had already done sexual assault um, in, in that chapter, and so that part was done, but still some of the stuff just really does not translate well um, yeah. to, to online, so. Ha has this world situation, this pandemic, sparked any like research ideas or project ideas or do you think anything might be going on in these next couple of months or months we've gone through already that would really impact sexual assault or domestic violence things like that yeah so um not to sound opportunistic by saying i'm going to research this right of course um, but, uh, <laughs> one of the things that i am doing is um, I sent out, so I've interviewed, I should back up, I've interviewed maybe 147 people uh, over the last eight years, I would say. I'd have to go back to check to make sure that's the correct number. Um, so I sent out to people who said that they allowed me to contact them again, kind of a feeler to see, hey, has this impacted you? If it has, would you be willing to talk about it? with me either me sending you you know questions that you just type the answer to um, or talk to me over the phone and so i actually think that this is going to be a pretty interesting research study um, and informally just emailing with people that i had interviewed it seems like depending on where you are in your coping that this this whole crisis could either be a really great thing or a really horrible thing and that wasn't something that I would have thought about. I would have thought kind of what Kelsey was saying, well, you can't get access to services, right? You can't be in person. You can't get out of the house to receive therapy, which people who are in more immediate kind of coping strategy, sort of survival mode, I think that's more detrimental to. But some of the people who have coped and they're a little bit further along in their process said that they loved being away from people. And they just loved being at home, not having to deal with their coworkers, not having to, you know, try to pretend that everything was all right. They could just be at home. And so I think it's going to be really interesting to see what people say, depending upon where they are. Uh, so, yeah, I am actually planning a research study, like I said, in relation to this. Very interesting. Yeah. Us, uh, we are just kind of... I'm not doing any research, um, but we are going to have to like adjust how we operate normally because we don't know like how long this is going to go on. So um, looking at doing like policies on doing video conference therapy. So maybe if, you know, the person can't, you know, talk over the phone, maybe they have the space to like go and get on a computer, put in headsets and then talk to someone that way. Um, I also think people miss like that person-to-person um, -person individual therapy, so I think that we'll get more people to sign up for that. Uh, and then offering like uh, education services um, for professionals and students kind of online, I think that we're going to have to do that. Um, that's how it's going to impact us, I think. Mm -hmm. Can I ask a question, Kelsey? Sure can. I know I'm not asking the questions, but... <laughs> Can you still do hospital calls? Like if yeah, a survivor so, wanted, okay. Yeah, like we um, are still going to hospital calls. We had somebody donate cloth masks to us, mm -hmm. that to use. Um, but unless a patient has COVID, 
um, and was assaulted. We have been turned away once. Um, we were called and then they called us back and said, don't come um, because they tested like the screen was positive for COVID. Um, but otherwise we're still going and with clients at the hospital and being there for them. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's great. I know we're talking about sexual assault awareness month, but I know that y'all also do domestic violence. Um, so I had a student who volunteers at Middle Way House, which is in Bloomington, Indiana, but it's um, the domestic violence shelter there. Um, but I had a student who, who volunteers there that was telling me that calls um, there were way, way up. Um, mm -hmm. You guys seeing some of the same stuff, Kelsey? So um, we don't do the domestic violence that's Mid-Central Community Action here in McLean. Um, and I haven't checked in with them, but my assumption is that the calls are going to increase because people are in those environments and they can't leave. Uh -huh. So unfortunately, we're definitely going to probably see an increase of calls. Yeah. It's really odd, though, and not fun to think about. But um, so my parents both work for um, like child protection services, mm -hmm. like child welfare, um, and their calls have been way, way down because kids aren't in schools um, yeah. or daycares or whatever. So there's no one really reporting on it. They're just stuck in those situations. So rather than the calls going up, they're actually going down because they don't have access to the to the people that would normally help them. So yeah, it's going to be yeah, it is to see how this plays out if and when it finally peters. Yeah, I know. I think it's weird too that we haven't had as many um, hospital calls. Like we've had, we had one um, the first through the 15th. Um, but like I thought that we would still continue to get hospital calls because kind of like that same thing with domestic violence. They're in this environment with these people that aren't safe. So you would think that the, you know, everything would increase, but so, you know what, though? Oh, sorry, Kelsey. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Uh, so, <clears throat> I, in going like locally to our hospitals to get tests done over the past like month, um, they're very, I don't know what the word is, selective of who they're going to let in the hospital. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm not saying they wouldn't let somebody who's been sexually assaulted, but I think that that would be a big barrier to reporting or trying to go to the hospital if you have like a table with like a guard and a nurse who is asking you why you're going. Do you have an appointment? Is this an emergency? I would just leave. I would not even try to go. That's a great yeah. point. I know. Yeah. I love that. I think that the public society can make any impact or help with sexual assault awareness month with us being all inside like what could we be doing to help support sexual assault awareness month and all the initiatives associated with it um, I, sorry go ahead. To no, you, you go kelsey <laughs> um so for us just like People are working from home more, so they're in front of their computers more often and probably on their social media more often. So just kind of sharing all of our stuff. We're posting videos. Um, we're still doing the events virtually, and we're having community members um, like law enforcement, stuff like that, still participate in our events, um, which is really great. Uh, so just kind of being more aware of what's online and then just kind of actively participating in stuff. Yes, Stepping Stones has done great videos. I love the videos. They're so good. Um, and so I think people are bored mm -hmm. and they, they have more time to be on social media. Not that people aren't on it a lot already, but, you know, maybe before they wouldn't have watched those videos or those videos might not have been online. They can watch them. I also think, I mean, hopefully, fingers crossed, people might be reading more. and. There are lots of wonderful resources to read about sexual assault. So I think the book, is it Say My Name that just came out? Or is it No? Know My Name? My Name? No, Know My Name, yeah. Say you My know, Name is a Destiny's Child song. <laughs> <laughs> my Name, uh, which I, I ordered on Amazon. It won't be here till the 30th. But, you know, the fact that people have more free time to do those sorts of things, I would hope you know, they would take advantage of the, some of those resources. What I usually tell my students for Sexual Assault Awareness Month, 
I mean, obviously I force them to do civic engagement projects. Um, you know, they, they have to do it whether they want to or not. But I say, if you can just make one small change this month, so maybe you're somebody who victim blames and would say something like, why would she be wearing that? Or maybe it's her fault. She was walking alone at night. One small thing that you could personally do to alter this, how survivors are treated or to make things a little bit better. So I'm hoping through all of the social media, some of the promotion of, like I said, the know my name <laughs> book, um, my name, my name. Will, you know hopefully have a little bit of a change because they have more time at home to re reflect on things that's what i hope anyway Solid yeah. hopes. excellent you both for answering some wonderful questions and doing your part to to raise awareness and thank you especially yeah, thank in the middle of a pandemic yeah crazy times it is. this has been diving with the dov thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time